Hi guys, it's that time again. We're getting ready to start the radio show. The Cure Radio Show. And I really do hope you guys can join us. Today we're discussing a very important topic. The importance of having fathers in our life. And the importance of having a good relationship with them. And the impact that they have in our lives. There's a lot of fathers missing in a lot of families. And we hope that we can give good advice and hopefully come up with solutions. That is our greatest hope, anyhow. And like usual, well, Bobby wants to say hello. Like usual, she says. And yes, hello. Um, please join us. It's going to be an interesting conversation about fathers and uh, what do we need to do better. Or what do we do good so our kids actually can live a better life? It's almost as if healthy father, healthy kid. So, <laughs> so um, we hope to be good parents anyway uh, because, uh, you know, it really reflects on our kids. They are like sponges and we... We need to try to set the best example possible. At least that's my take. Yes, we need to. Well, we hope to. We're trying to. We're praying for it. Well, we should try our best. Yes. Give it all you got. Don't hold back. So what was the thing? Join, join. Can you do that sign? Join, join. No. What do you, what do you well, do? Okay? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. What is it? Join, join. No. <laughs> join us, please. Join us. But this guy, he... he Down in the deep, when your brain goes numb, you can call that mental freeze. When these people talk too much, put it in slow motion, yeah. I feel like an astronaut in the ocean. She say that I'm cool. Right. I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's true. I believe in G-O-D. Don't believe in T-H-O-T. She keep playing me dumb. I'm a player of a fun. Y'all don't really know my mental, let me give you the picture like stencil Falling out in a drought, no flow, rain was I'm pouring down See that pain was all around, see my mode was kind of lounge Didn't know which which way to turn, flow was cool but I still felt burned Energy up, you can feel my surge, I'ma kill everything like this purge Let's just get this straight for a second, I'ma work Even if I don't get paid for progression, I'ma get it Everything that I do is electric, I'ma keep it in a motion Keep it moving like kinetic, yeah in a frame, but I know I don't blame everything that I say. Man, I seen you deflate. Let me elevate this in a prank. Have you walking on a plane? La, 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 la. Both hands together, God, let me pray. Let me pray. I've been going right, right around, call that relay. The Cure with Amy Cabo. Life can bring many difficult situations. Domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Good afternoon, and welcome to The Cure Radio Show. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, with my amazing partner, Boris. Well, I'm still amazing today. Thank you, baby. Still today, thanks to God. Our show is available live on your radio, also through our app, The Cure, on any smartphone, and our website, GodIsTheCure.com, because He is. We are broadcasting today live from Miami through satellite, available in 35 radios in 11 states and Series XM Channel 131, the Family Channel, as well as live on social media, and soon after the show, any podcast player as a podcast. I wanted to thank our social media followers since we've been reaching an average of a million people monthly. So thank you, and thank God. This show deals with suffering, the tenacity of the human spirit, the will to move forward, the courage to keep moving forward despite any obstacle with the help of God who enables us to help each other. We provide testimonials to let people know that we're not alone. And in this show, the testimony started with me having been a survivor from child abuse well into young adulthood. We also have experts in several fields and inspirational speakers that are willing to help us with valuable information Considering that education is necessary, awareness is crucial, and comfort is needed. 
I do believe we all suffer, or have suffered from something, and we hope to be a source of healing for each other. Now, despite trying everything, God was my only cure, but other forms of healing are presented to service everyone. Life will always be challenging, but I always know there's always someone who cares. If no one at all, at least God does. The, sun, the song we played earlier was Astronaut in the Ocean by Mast Wolf, and this is my take. We can get deep with emotions when it comes to the enemy's lies. He wants to keep us down, make us lose hope as he tries. So sorry, but there is a God of which Satan has no power over. God is the one who provides what is needed and removes the facade as we become sober. We need faith and perseverance, trusting God no matter what goes on. We must acknowledge the gravity of his sacrifice and the lessons given to us by God's Son. Power is prayer if we believe. God elevates our faith to bring us together. We help each other and keep moving forward, tackle what comes despite what we weather. Today we will talk about the need for fathers and the relationships between fathers and kids. And we have a special guest, Dr. Bob Record. So, Dr. Bob received a Doctor of Ministry degree and Master of Divinity from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas, and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology from Indiana University. Dr. Record founded Total Life Impact, an organization to evangelistically challenge people to surrender their lives to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and to then be on mission for Jesus Christ where they are. Dr. Bob Record is the author of many books, the latest being Father's Wounds, Hope for Healing and Preventing Infections Caused by Relationship Wounds. Dr. Bob, welcome to The Cure. It's great to have you. Thank you, Amy. Good to be with you and Boris, and thank you for the privilege. Dr. Bob, let's just dive right into it. How important do you think is the father in a family? Why is it so important for children to grow up with a father? Well, so long, Amy, it has been said that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And that's so true in that mom has such an impact, and when very famous people have an opportunity on, <laughs> on the TV to say something to a family member. They always, as you know, say, hi, mom. But <laughs> it also has been proven that dads have a huge impact. And where there is a dad in place, the child grows up to be much more emotionally stable, much stronger in relationships socially better in school, much less difficult behavioral problems, much faster in their learning. So that dad Im improves the impact of mom and dad together in a huge way. And how do you suppose is that the dad evens out the mom or sets off the mom? We have to have an equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, I, both, because they both bring great strength. Well, I'm sure they both bring good things to kids. And when you say father's wounds, what do you mean by that? Well, thank you for asking. You know, our bodies receive wounds when we are injured that penetrate. A uh, definition of the wound says it penetrates the tissue of the skin, impacting the tissue below the skin negatively. And if it is not dealt with, cared for, and healed, infection results in the same way when a child in their childhood years or their adolescent years are wounded by a dad it is usually to the heart and to the emotions therefore it impacts what lies beneath just like the tissue that lies beneath the skin and what is that it is the relational strength 
It is the bond of love and the issue of trust. Those are impacted negatively. And if not corrected and healed, like a wound to the body, infection sets in and impacts the long run for the person who's been wounded. And are these wounds derived from the father present or the father absent? Mm-hmm. Oh, what a great question. And the answer can be both. When the father is absent, obviously, it's a huge impact. And research shows that often the child begins to wonder what they did to cause the father being absent. Did they contribute to it? Was it the reason that they weren't like they should have been or they could have been? Is that what made dad leave? But research also shows that when dads are present, the wounds can be just as significant. Why? Because dad may be present, but not emotionally engaged. And when the dad is present and not emotionally engaged, wounds occur. Or the dad doesn't take the time to intentionally say how much he loves the child and how proud he is of the child. And thirdly, as the child grows up, when there's an event that is so important to that child, that may not may not feel important to the dad, and the dad chooses not to show up, let's work get in the way, travel get in the way, other issues get in the way, or I just don't have time. That child may not say much, but that child ends up being wounded because dad wasn't there. So even if dad's at home, there can be wounds, Amy. So dad would be present but emotionally absent. Right. And that's if the dad's not abusive. There's the other angle. (laughs) That's also a wound. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, So where is the the line if there is more damage with the dad's presence than good? Say that again, Boris. Like, would there be a line in which the damage from the dad's presence is more than the good that he delivers? Absolutely. Could the bad outweigh the good? Yeah. Yeah, that often happens when it's an intentional wound, be it physical abuse, be it verbal abuse, or be it sexual abuse. When those intentional wounds happen from dad to stepdad or father figure, the dad's presence can actually cause more damage than his absence. But just remember, the absence also causes damage. So the child ends up being the the sufferer in both cases. And therefore, it's so important to go back to healthy relationships with a dad, a stepdad, and a father figure. So very important for that child to grow up well and to have the best opportunity of fulfilling everything God had for them. And there seems to be a lot of um, breakdown in today's family. So, it, you know, I'm just curious as to how that's affecting society today. That's great. Uh, Mary Epstein, uh, is a senior... Well, that's, we'll continue talking about that. We have to take a short break, but hold on to that thought and we'll continue. Yes, we'll continue talking about fathers and sons. We'd love to hear from you. Ask us a question or give us your opinion. one 34 truth one 34 truth Right back with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Amy Cabo and The Cure. This show deals with suffering, the tenacity of the human spirit, and the courage to keep moving forward with the help of God. I want people to know that there's hope. I was forced into my abortion because I didn't think I had a choice. I want people to know there's choices. Well, Amy, my heart is breaking. I just want you to know that I love you and I thank God for you. Amy Cabo and The Cure. Every Saturday at 1 Eastern on The Truth Network. My heart feels heavy now.
now we will continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back. This is Amy Cabo, and thanks for tuning in. Yes, and thank you for me. And also remember that you can listen to the radio <laughs> show live through our app, The Cure, with Amy Cabo, or as a podcast. Just look for God is the Cure on any podcast platform. The song that just played was Just As Much by Delaney Jane on Virginia to Vegas. This poem was written with James Davis on mind, coincidentally, is dealing with, with a dad thing as well. The heart can hurt when love is missing. Those close to us are sometimes kept away. It's not always as simple as a phone call, but there is one we can always turn to every day. Hang tough. Mistakes don't define us. We can learn, change, and grow. Forgiving is what makes a difference. God's love will see us through the blow. The enemy is responsible for the dark times. God is the one who rescues us and is always there. We must have perfect confidence in his aid. When it seems hopeless, prayer keeps us from despair. God is in control. Everything leads to him. Suffering can be a blessing in disguise serving its purpose according to his will. It can be confusing, but it can also open eyes. We are talking about Father's Wounds with special guest, Dr. Bob Record. And before we went into break, we were asking about the breakdown of the family, the breakdown in the nuclear family, that is, in the home. And so, Bob, could you just explain to us how it is negatively impacting today's society? Yes, ma'am, Amy. Uh, one of the challenges that we have is in America, one out of three children under the age of 18 grow up at some point without a biological dad. If you go to the African-American community, it goes to about 62 to 64 percent. If you get into the inner city of our nation, it's 72 wow. percent. Therefore, there's a lot of hurt and anger as a result of absentee dads. Add to that the wounds that are made by dads who may be present, as we were talking earlier, because they're not engaged. They're not saying they love and are proud of the child as they grow up. They're not engaged in the events that are important to the child. That leaves a lot of wounds. And we're seeing it break out in our society. To your specific question, when you look back at the end of 2020 and the protests and violence that happened in many of our major cities, it was said that a lot of racial tensions were the cause of that. And they did play a role. But Mary Eberstadt of the Faith and Reason Institute, that is a tremendous research organization, did a major study. They found that there were 570 uh, incidences of violence in those protests, and they found that there were three major underlying forces that had a major cause in them. One, father wounds, issues that the people who are involved in them now had with their fathers or stepdads or their father figures as they were growing up. That directly impacted their lack of a meaningful relationship with their heavenly father because they didn't have a good one with their earthly father. That also impacted the third major crisis, and that was what sociologists call the breakdown in patria, or the intended environment. The intended environment, according to God's word, is a mom, a dad, and children together as a nuclear family. The end of that study uh, was profound, Amy and Boris. It said this. It said the riots that we have seen, at least in significant part, are impacted by a visible consequence seen in the protest and the unrest caused by an invisible breakdown of parenting in the Western Hemisphere of the world. What a great and powerful and sad statement that it is breaking out and showing itself in very many profound ways, including all of the tensions we went through last fall and that continue into this year in 2021. 
So basically, one thing leads to another. If it doesn't happen how God intended it, then it's progressive, and the results become worse. It's what I'm what I'm hearing that the factors that were missing was, you, you know, having two parents that that were that were loving with the kids, and I can certainly understand that. Well, I understand that too. I just don't understand why there is so many people that don't understand it. Like they're trying to break the nuclear family, honestly. And it's like there's the moronish projects that uh, basically say that it's not needed. Right. Maybe they're misinformed. Maybe. Mm -hmm. or they need to go to church more. <laughs> I think we're well, missing God a lot these days. I think a lot of us are coming back, actually. I think it's important to remember that those wounds that uh, many, both men and women, this is not just a man's thing, men and women experience from a dad, a stepdad, or a father figure are found, A, in his absence, but also in his words, actions, or inactions while they were growing through childhood and adolescence. And if they're not addressed, then there is ongoing challenges into their adult years and that's why we called it the ending the cycle of father wounds, because if it happens as a child is growing up through childhood or adolescence and isn't dealt with and healed and cared for, it is almost inevitably carried into their adult life, which means their adult relationships to their spouse, to their own children, and if not uh, stop and change, even to their grandchildren. Until somebody says, this isn't going to go any further in my lineage and draws a line in the sand and stops and takes the effort to heal those wounds, then it's going to keep on going in a cyclical generational impact. And that's the scary part that I see for our country. Except when we have a relationship with God, we realize we don't have to become our environment or allow our circumstances to control us. So tell me a little bit about forgiveness. How do we heal these wounds? Yeah, one of the, one of the key, Amy, is for forgiveness. Because we have to come to a point of realizing that to heal a wound that has happened, especially in the emotional, spiritual, and heart and soul area of our life, then it requires going back and healing. And God says the way to do that is through forgiveness. And he sets the example for all that he has forgiven us with. In fact, in Psalm 103, it says that God loves us so much that he's willing to remove our sin as far as the east is from the west and remember it no more. That's an amazing thing. He didn't choose north and south that has geographical pinpoints. He chose east and west. That doesn't have an ending or a beginning. It just is limitless. And he says, here's how I've loved you. In Jeremiah, he says, I've loved you with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness, I continually draw you to myself. And that means even when we aren't very lovable. He continues to love us the way we are, but love is too much to let us stay there. So he sets the example, and then he says some very clear things about what he expects from us when he has to notice he didn't say specific sins just any sins and all sins so long as you're truly sorry and then we'll continue talking about that and generational wounds specifically would love to hear from you tell us your story or ask a question 1-866-34-TRUTH 1-866-34-TRUTH we will be right back with amy cabo and the cure brown eyes brown hair yeah that sunlight that glare but she seems insecure in all the photos she hides inside her emotions aside so she can seem okay can't have her friends know the way deep down she's a lost soul search a small town girl never know she's hurt and she just wants to be herself but sometimes it's
The Cure with Amy Cabo. Life can bring many difficult situations, domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back, and thanks. Remember, we're live every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern on your radio, on our app, The Cure, and our website, GodIsTheCure.com, because he is. Yes. And also, I'm, again, the podcast plug, so all shows are available as a video podcast. Just look for God is the Cure with Amy Cabo, or type in God is the Cure and the podcast, The Cure with Amy Cabo, will show up. That song that just played was Brown Eyes, Brown Hair by Caleb Earn. Or Hearn, I don't know. Okay, guys, this is what I get from it. Most of us don't complain. We can be good at playing tough, not wanting to worry anyone, moving forward when it's rough. It helps to think of others, focus on what's good and pray. Even when life has become empty, God steps in and makes a way. It may be impossible for man, but with God anything can be. Faith is what makes it happen. Those enslaved can be free. Our Father is an awesome God. He's our comfort, strength, and guide. Dark times and fear cannot compare. We get back up with God on our side. We're discussing Father's Wounds with special guest, Dr. Bob Record. So, Dr. Bob, how do we do better as fathers? Maybe we were victims of Father's Wounds ourselves. That was my question. You're not a father. Oh, okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Bob, pretend I asked the question. <laughs> I think the is if we don't want things to be reproduced like we experienced them as a child, then we have to do some things differently. After all, Einstein said, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same things and expect different results. That was me. I had wounds from a biological dad who was an alcoholic because uh, while my mom was carrying me, she got very ill. She was encouraged not to carry me to term, but she believed that God alone gave and took life. So she did. She carried me to term, but it cost her a great deal. Months after I was born, she died. And that left me and two older brothers with an alcoholic dad who didn't know what to do with us and wasn't sure he wanted us. And we got thrown from place to place and house to house, and uh, things went from bad to worse to hellish. And I finally got adopted, and and that sounds great, and it sounds like a wonderful ending to a story. But my adopted dad had been the result of a statutory rape, a 45-year-old man with a 15-year-old girl. When she had the baby, she didn't know what to do with the baby, so she gave the baby to her alcoholic mom and dad and that's how my adopted dad was raised in a a home full of chaos he ended up in a gang by the time he was 13 stabbed by the time he was 16 in a fight because if you can't find family in your house you'll find it somewhere and that's what he did in a gang now he's my dad and you can imagine the baggage he brought so i had issues that i needed to forgive and to work through from my biological dad and my adopted dad. Had I not done that, I would have taken the baggage that I received from them right into my own marriage, too, which I did to some degree. And it has been a continuing process to see things that I needed to change. So, Boris, to your question, uh, I had to make sure that uh, my adopted dad expressed his love to me by providing. He worked hard. He was gone all the time. He was working from uh, before daylight to after dark and therefore couldn't be very involved in my life. I had to decide, am I going to do the same in my own kid's life? And what was scary is I got into my own career. I started seeing some success. I started finding myself gone a lot, but I felt like My family knows I love them because I'm providing for them. Well, that's exactly 
what my adopted dad modeled. Yet it left some real hurt and disappointment in me. And I had to go back and address that. I had to go back and face that. And I had to go back and change that in my own life. Because whatever we are modeled as we grow up, we are in great danger of furthering as we become adults and carrying into our own life. In fact, we absorb more about what we're modeled than we do what we hear being told to us. So it, for every young person who gets to be an adult, they have to go back and do some evaluation. Are there some things that need to be changing from what I experienced as I grew up as a child and uh, as an adolescent in my own home? Well, I guess it does happen a lot. That's where the stigmata comes from, that they feel whoever's been through a lot is going to pass it on to their children, though it's not always the case. And, but, you know, like, as for me, I try to model after my father in heaven because my parents were no good, so my parents were those in heaven, the Virgin Mary and, and God and Jesus. And so what does scripture, how does scripture view fatherhood? What's God ex, God's expectation so that we can model after what he's taught us? Boy, Amy, I love, I love your show's title, that God is the cure. I think the key part of uh, that reality is that we cannot do what God alone must do. But just as importantly, God will not do what we must do. So, in my life, he could have come in and just made everything go away in just a spoken word, and that would have been it. But God <laughs> knew that I need to grow and stretch and change by working through the processes. He needed to give me the strength to face them, to deal with them, to turn from them, and to overcome them. That's how I would be stronger. And dads are so important because look back at Jesus. In the Gospel of John alone, he refers to his heavenly Father 25 times. Even to the point that he says, I can't do anything without seeing what my Father is doing and following him. That relationship between Jesus Christ, the Son, and God, the heavenly Father, was absolutely essential. And to your great point, he is our heavenly Father, even to the point that he says he is a father to the fatherless, and thank God for that. But that still doesn't mean it will be easy, and it indicates that <clears throat> there will be a lot we have to overcome from our earthly experiences, but we can do it and face it all and deal with it all through his help. And he gives very clear guidelines into his scripture that if he has forgiven us, he gives very clear guidelines on how we forgive others, including dads, stepdads, father figures who may have left us wanting more than we got as we were growing up. Yes, I mean, somebody once said, well, how do I love my enemy? And somebody came up with a very smart answer. You should pray for them and ask God's best for them. You don't have to ask anything specific, but God's best for them. And yes, that's how you love your enemy. You don't have to know them or be around them, but you can pray for them. Oh, that's, that's a great... And it's so true with dads, stepdads, father figures, uh, that we look back, we pray for them, and also we remember that love is not primarily just an emotion. Love is a decision of the will. I choose, I will to love my wife. Even when we disagree, I love and choose to love my grandkids, even when they're not obeying, or my kids as they were growing up. You're exactly right to pray for those who have hurt us or wounded us, and to make sure that we make the choice to see the worth in them, to love them, even though they're unlovable, because that's how God loves us. And that's a matter of choice and the will, even more than it is an emotion. Amen. Amen. And we have a social media question where he asks, do you think that today's fathers have things harder or easier than the older generation had them? And we have only 30 seconds. Uh, I think in many ways, 
because of the pressures of our culture. Everything is so instantaneous. When you have a cell phone and computers that were told us that we'd be a paperless society and would give us more free time, it has actually put us at the beck and call of anybody and everybody all the time. So I think there are a lot greater uh, expectations. I think there's a faster pace. I think there are more and I, and I think people are afraid to be kind because they feel that kindness is mistaken over weakness and a lot of, you know, misinformation we've been we given. We'll be right back with Amy Cabell and The Cure. Amy Cabell and The Cure. This show deals with suffering, the tenacity of the human spirit, and the courage to keep moving forward with the help of God. I want people to know that there's hope. I was forced into my abortion because I didn't think I had a choice. I want people to know there's choices. Well, Amy, my heart is breaking. I just want you to know that I love you and I thank God for you. Amy Cabo and The Cure. Every Saturday at 1 Eastern on The Truth Network. Daydream. Life feels like a daydream. And I just wish that I could wake up. I just wish that I could wake up. My mind whispers into nighttime. Voices always keeping me up, telling me that I should give up. Cause lately I've been in the backseat to my mind, trying to take control. continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Hi again, and thanks for tuning in. We're live every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern on your radio, on our app, The Cure, and on social media. Just look for God is The Cure, I don't because know if, He is. Yes, He is. And also, I don't know if you guys know, but Amy spelled it an I and a double E. So just look for the podcast, search for The Cure with Amy Cabo, or type in God is The Cure. If you see the podcast, The Cure with Amy Cabo, then please subscribe. Well, there isn't many God, it's The Cure, so it'll pop up. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find The Cure, but not God is The Cure. Okay, so the song <laughs> that just played was Sad Forever by Nightcore. My son watches anime. I thought it was cool. It sounded like an anime singing. So here's my take, guys. When we can't escape the sadness... And we feel that it's the end. Know the enemies at work and God, our greatest friend. It can be never ending, giving in to the voices in our head. We shouldn't blame ourselves, but turn to God instead. Gratitude is awesome medicine. Praising God, He takes control. Everything gets better when we trust Him, allowing what must happen to save our soul. No more sad days when we live for Christ. Resist what's dark. Happiness is a choice. Doubt and fear is how we're fooled. With God, what we hear is his voice. We are continuing our conversation with our special guest, Dr. Bob Record, and he's helping us analyze the importance of a relationship between fathers and sons. Dr. Bob, I'm just curious, since we were talking about God, how does having a difficult difficult experience with a dad or stepdad or father figure, how can it affect a person's view on God? Well, because we can look to the eternal through the lens of the temporal. So whatever we experience in our physical life, we tend to cast, to a certain degree, into the eternal perspective. So when you have a tension with a dad, a stepdad, a father figure, or a hurt or a wound, you tend to be tempted to look at, well, maybe God doesn't love me any more than this. And how do I know that if 
I do the wrong thing, God won't slap me or uh, punish me or cause me grief and heartache because that's what I experienced in my household. That's what I experienced as I grow up. And we don't have the ability sometimes to differentiate that there is a vast difference, as you so well indicate, between the temporal and the eternal. Yeah, and so if someone's listening today, for example, that they may have father wounds from their growing up years that have never been addressed and the hurt has never gone away, what are some practical steps we, they can take to make things right? So I think oh, we're asking, that. number one, in the book, we gave a little assessment so that in five minutes, anybody with a pen and the assessment can walk through and say, according to this, are there likely father wounds in my life? Because we wanted to help people get a handle on it. And that's really, really important and a place to start. If you find that you don't have the likelihood of many father wounds, then to your point earlier, take time to say, Lord, thank you that I don't have those. And thank you for the dad or the stepdad or the father figure I had. If you do, then the rest of the book is how to deal with forgiveness, whether your father, stepfather, or father figure is living or not, if they're present or not. Because here's the bottom line, Amy and Boris, the forgiving issue, the forgiving issue is not primarily for the father or the stepdad or the father figure. It's for you. It's for the listener who may have experienced it. And the book walks through how do I go about forgiving that in practical ways? Because in Scripture, both in Colossians and Ephesians, the Bible says, get rid of the challenges in your life and be sure that you're being kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Listen to these words. Just as God, through Christ, forgave you. Here's the reality. We can't give away what we haven't experienced. And only when I experience the forgiveness of God in my own life am I able to grant forgiveness to a dad, a stepdad, or a father figure, because I've experienced it firsthand, now I'm in a position where I can give it away. He will say the same thing in Colossians. So he says, just remember how much you've been forgiven, and in turn, take the steps to forgive those who have hurt you. We deal with that extensively in the book on how to do that in very simple, very practical, very meaningful ways, where anybody can do it anywhere at any time. And if you're not aware of these wounds under the same token, you can ask God to open your eyes to whatever flaws you need correcting or whatever areas you need to improve, I believe, anyway. I mean, wisdom is a beautiful thing, and you'd be surprised what happens when you ask. Uh, I'm sorry? Sit down and make a record on three-by-five cards or a pad of paper of things you remember that hurt you, wounded you, disappointed you as you were growing up. And just make sure that as you do that, ask God to reveal to you anything that's there that may be blocking a relationship or a lack of forgiveness, and he'll do that. And we want, as you and Boris want, every listener to succeed. And if you've had those wounds, those hurts, don't let them be a stumbling block to you. Let them be a stepping stone. But in order to be a stepping stone, we all have to make choices to face them, to deal with them, and to take the steps to forgive them, because that's what sets us free. And what do you suppose, just to give good advice, are key role qualities a child needs in a father? Uh, well, one of the things that we found over and over and over again are four basic issues that a child needs in the father figure in their life. They need a provider protector. They need to know that that dad is going to provide for their needs, is going to meet all that which is required for them to grow in a healthy way, and will protect them from threats outside. But beware, dad or stepdad or father figure, just providing 
is not a sufficient issue of saying I love you. But they do need a provider protector. Secondly, Amy and Boris, they need a nurturer, one who encourages them to grow, to try new things, to find their own strengths, to build on those strengths, and to experience the God of all creation who is their Heavenly Father. But thirdly, they need a boundary maker and enforcer. In other words, they need to have somebody in that father figure who is willing to set boundaries because even God set boundaries for us, and they're always for our good. They are helping us to not get into trouble or go in directions we should not go that will be to our detriment. Every child needs that in a dad, a stepdad, or a father figure. And fourthly, they need a dad, a stepdad, a father figure who is willing to be a coach, who as they grow older and older, more and more, moves from the boundary maker and forcer to the coach nurturer to help them make their own decisions, to help them be supported in the decisions they make, or help correct the course when it needs to be correcting, but in a coaching way not in a directive way. Or just in other words, structure and teacher. <laughs> I, I think those are very important in a kid's life because that's the world. Uh, and so we're, we're just about done with the show today. I, I had a few more questions, but um, maybe we can squeeze one more. Okay. Uh, so... The, the healing process, everybody needs it. Who starts, the kid or the father? 30 seconds. It all, it all depends who recognizes the need for healing. If it's the child, then take the initiative. Begin to make the steps toward forgiveness. And again, in the book, we make that very clear to do that. If it by chance is the dad or father figure, then they are responsible. Whoever has the understanding that there is a wound that needs to be healed needs to take. The or first step. whoever needs to be the adult. So, but yeah. Dr. Bob Record, well, thank you so much for being with us today. We are done with today's show. Thank you. It's an honor. More information on Bob Record and his work can be found on. Dr. Bob, what was your website? <laughs> you don't have the website. PLIadministers.com. There you are. Okay, so now we can have time for a prayer. Heavenly Father, you give us a model of fatherhood in St. Joseph, who protected and loved Mary and Jesus. He responded quickly and faithfully to your promptings. We give you thanks for our fathers and for the protection and love they give us. Grant them the same courage and perseverance you gave to St. Joseph when he faced adversity and uncertainty. Like him, may they live with humility and faithfulness and be a source of joy and a pillar of stress, strength for their families. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And thank you to the Truth Network and all the wonderful people that work with us for having us on air and all the other radios that carry our program, including Series XM Channel 131. A special shout out to Robbie Dillmore, the host of Kingdom Pursuit, for his guidance and his friendship. This is Amy Cabo. You have been listening to The Cure. Please check our podcast, The Cure with Amy Cabo our app to cure or our website godisthecure.com thank you to our listeners for being with us and until next week be kind always give it your best and stay safe remember this pandemic will pass there is a god so until next saturday much love be true to yourself and others maintain your values but most of all keep your faith peace listening to The Cure with Amy Cabo. For more information or to get Amy's book, Love is the Answer, God is the Cure, or to listen to the podcasts of previous shows, visit godisthecure.com.